this is Dr. A with your clinical chemistry review video on bicarbonate and lactate. So first we're going to start with bicarbonate. It is an extracellular anion, the second most abundant uh, extracellular anion uh, after chloride. In the clinical laboratories and on chemistry laboratory reports like the BMP and CMP, so basic metabolic panel and comprehensive metabolic panel, bicarbonate is referred to as total carbon dioxide. Um, and that's because 90% of carbon dioxide in the blood is in the form of bicarbonate. Thus, a measure of total carbon dioxide is an approximate measure of bicarbonate. Um, the total carbon dioxide on the BMP and CMP is not the same as the partial pressure of CO2. And the partial pressure of CO2 is red on the edges. The forms of bicarbonate are dissolved as carbon dioxide, um, carbon dioxide bound to proteins, bicarbonate ions, and carbonic acid. <clears throat> Although it is filtered by the kidneys, bicarbonate is reabsorbed in the nephron's proximal con convoluted tubule, usually as CO2. Uh, excess bicarb can be lost in urine, and CO2, of course, is removed from the body through the process of exhalation or breathing out through the lungs. The clinical significance of bicarbonate, uh, its main role is in acid-base balance or, you know, could be disturbing imbalances. So acid-base imbalances will have a dramatic effect on the bicarbonate concentration. Levels of bicarb and carbon dioxide can assist in determining the cause of the acid-base imbalance, but the other test results are needed as well. Um, at the very least, the pH is needed, but um, of course, other lab tests that indicates uh, what is going on with the patient. In metabolic alkalosis, the most common cause is the most common cause of an elevated bicarb level. So in metabolic alkalosis, the pH will be high and the bicarb will be high. And in metabolic metabolic acidosis is commonly associated with a decreased bicarbonate level. So in metabolic acidosis, the pH is low and the bicarb is low. Um, and both of these being metabolic imbalances actually indicate that uh, the problem is in the bicarb and not in the CO2 or any of the gases. Uh, if the problem is in the CO2 or, or any of the gases, those would be respiratory imbalances, respiratory alkalosis or respiratory acidosis. More on that in the acid-base videos. The function of bicarb, it's the major component of the blood buffering system to maintain pH. And also, along with chloride, it maintains electrical neutrality in the red cell. Uh, for that, there is a deeper explanation in the video on um, sodium, chloride, and potassium. The reference range for bicarbonate is 23 to 29 millimoles per liter. Again, high bicarb levels are associated with metabolic alkalosis, but also vomiting and Cushing's disease. And low bicarb levels are associated with metabolic acidosis, chronic diarrhea, diabetic ketoacidosis, kidney disease, Addison's disease, and aspirin overdose. The procedures to measure bicarb. Um, the ABG analyzers usually use an ion selective electrode. Um, where the membrane allows carbon dioxide gas to pass through the membrane into a bicarbonate solution. And then the hydrogen ions are produced, which lower the pH of the solution. The pH change is used to calculate the bicarbonate concentration. So it's a calculated value uh, based on the pH rating. The uh, enzymatic method, which is what you're going to see in most of your big analyzers that run the panels, like the basic met metabolic and comprehensive metabolic panels, and um, those method enzymes convert all the carbon dioxide into bicarbonate, and then the bicarbonate is converted to oxaloacetic acid, and then that reaction is coupled with an ABDH reaction, which is what is measured, and it's proportional to the bicarb concentration. Colorimetric methods are just not really used, commonly used, and your uh, samples are uh, usually heparinized plasma, although for the enzymatic methods, you could use serum also. The sources of errors would be running specimens that have been exposed to air as carbon dioxide would dissipate in the air. And lastly, we have lactate. So um, lactate is a byproduct of an emergency mechanism that produces a small amount of ATP when oxygen is severely diminished. Um, so it's, you know, glycolysis without the Krebs cycle. Uh, not specifically regulated at all. The levels rise rapidly when oxygen delivery decreases below a critical level. Uh, and the clinical application is uh, the metabolic monitoring in critically ill patients. Also, uh, oftentimes it can be drawn in the ER to decide how critically ill somebody is and if they need to go to the ICU or not. 
Um, the lab procedure for lactate on um, the specimen handling, you need to avoid using a tourniquet and deliver the specimen on ice, which is ideally in he uh, heparinized plasma. Uh, and the method, the most common method today are enzymatic methods that use lactate oxidase to produce pyruvate and then and, uh, hydrogen peroxide. And then uh, the peroxidase enzyme is used to measure, to uh, use with the hydrogen peroxide to produce a colorimetric reaction, which is then in proportion to the amount of lactate that was present in the sample. The reference range for lactate for a venous sample is 0 0.5 to 2.2 millimoles per liter, and for an arterial sample it is 0 0.5 to 1.6 millimoles per liter. And that is your last slide. Thank you for your attention.